Hello there. Today I am going to demonstrate the way that I work wampum shells. These shells are very delicate and very temperamental, and for that reason I use historical tools, such as this bow drill. Now to begin with, I need to break the shell into usable pieces. To do this I use a ball-peen hammer. The ball-peen allows me to focus the force of my swing. Makes it less likely to break where I don't want it to break. This first piece I chipped off is not ideal, so I'm chipping off another. For a nice rich pattern, you want a piece that contains a lot of purple. Now I chip off some of the unnecessary sections. This is very delicate work, and you want to be very careful doing it. Now I set my piece down to begin drilling. I work the piece on a scrap of leather. This has three functions. First, it provides a bit of padding to prevent me from crushing the shell. The second, it provides a bit of friction to prevent the shell from skidding away. And the third is that it provides something to, for the drill to go in that isn't the table. Easier to replace a little scrap of leather than it is to replace the top of my table. I use a bow drill because, as I mentioned, the shells are very delicate and temperamental. Using an electric drill, they have an unfortunate tendency to blow up. Two things that the shells don't handle very well are vibrations and pressure. You want to keep both of these to a minimum. The bow drill allows for much more control than an electric drill. This allows me to keep vibrations and pressure to a minimum. The downside is that it takes bloody forever. I'm using my head to help brace the piece, resting against my left hand. This has an additional function of placing my eyes closer to the piece so that I can see that everything is working well. Sometimes if you're not paying attention, the drills will stop cutting. This can either be due to the drill bit blunting or coming loose in the piece of dowel. Here the drill starts to bind, so I stop drilling. What you don't want to do is force the drill through. This can crack your shell. Binding generally means that you're pretty close to all the way through. What I do here is I take the drill bit out and I use it instead as a gimlet, working it back and forth very delicately. This will only work to go through if you're very, very close, but even if you don't make it through, it does clean up the hole and allows you to go back to the bow drill. Out of respect for your time, I'm speeding things up. And I'm through. I'm going to drill a second hole to make this into a button. And that is two holes. For the next step, I'm going to move things into my workshop. To grind the shell, I am using a hand crank grinder. The wheel is of a very fine grit. Both of these help me to minimize vibrations. 
Electric grinders tend to bounce all over the place. This one just rocks back and forth. Using the round of the grinder is faster but also more dangerous. I don't want to risk it while I'm on camera, so I switch to the flat. Unfortunately, most of this next step is obscured either by my hand or by the wheel. This is just as true for me as it is for you. In order to see what progress I'm making, I have to stop every 50 or so strokes. What I'm doing here is just grinding the inside of the shell flat and smooth. You want a nice broad flat section for a button. Hopefully you can see the progress. I didn't think to adjust the focus. God, this grinder noise is irritating when sped up. Spinning the wheel is tiring, so I periodically switch hands. When grinding, it's important to wear lung protection. The dust from these shells is mildly toxic. And it can make you very sick if you get a large dose of it. The dust particles are small enough that if you get them in your eyes, you're not going to go blind. However, they are highly alkaline, so you may want to wear eye protection anyway. The dust isn't pleasant to get on the hands, but gloves tend to limit my precision. The wheel gradually gets gummed up with shell dust, so I switch to fresh sections when I need to go fast. Now I begin working on the edge of the shell, grinding it into a more rounded button shape. Poor focus again, but you can see that it's starting to take shape. This is roughly as round as I need it, so I'm just going to finish polishing up the flat. For a button, you only need to polish the one side. For a bead, though, you want to grind away the outside of the shell so that the purple is visible from both sides of the bead. My button has a little divot in it, so I'm rocking it back and forth along that divot to grind out just that one section. This will naturally make one edge of your button thinner, but I just need it to fool the eye. I don't need it to be perfect. By rocking it back and forth, you prevent the formation of a bevel line. Got a scare here. The shells are very, very delicate, and I've broken beads just by dropping them on the floor. What I'm doing here is just rounding off all the corners. Once again, you want to do this in a rocking motion to prevent any kind of flat sections appearing. Well, that's good enough for you lot. Back inside to finish things off. To finish off, I go over the piece with the finest grit sandpaper I can find. I want to remove any rough spots and corners. I also want to polish the edge just a little bit. The sandpaper can get the piece smoother than the grinder can. 
When sanding, I want to be sure to always sand the piece in the same direction. This will hide any scratches and grind marks. If you need to remove a lot of material, you should sand against a flat surface such as a tabletop, but if you want fine work, you should sand against your hand. The softness of your hand will force the sandpaper into every little divot. It will also conform to the curvature of your piece, preventing any flat sections from appearing. It also toughens up your hands. To do the flat of the bead, I'm placing it on my little scrap of leather. This is a bit of a compromise between the tabletop and my palm. And just like that, we are done. And there you have it, a finished button. I hope you enjoyed or at least learned something.